Hey, everybody, it's Jay Privman along with Andy Beyer. We gave you a Breeders' Cup preview seminar last year, and we are back this year. But before we get started, just want to make sure everybody knows that if you're playing and paying for DRF past performances, you can get them for free by betting with DRF Bets. Sign up at drf.com backslash bet with the promo code DOUBLE. That's D-O-U-B-L-E for all you baseball fans. And you're going to get a $250 first deposit bonus. And you can bet the Breeders' Cup on DRF Bets. It's as easy as that. And hopefully Andy and I will have some good guidance for you uh, for during the 14 races at uh, Del Mar on Friday and Saturday. Andy, how are you? I'm well, Jay. I'm looking forward to this. I mean, the, I mean, the Breeders' Cup is always one of the you know, the great handicapping challenges of uh, the year. And uh, uh, as usual, I can't figure out any of the European horses, but we'll try. <laughs> I thought you would get on the, the horn to all your Euro contacts and have uh, <laughs> and have a bunch of winners ready for us, no? I, I sniffed out a couple of them, but I think some of these races are just... Uh, uh, maybe a little too tough, even for the wise guys. Even for you? <laughs> I'm not that wise anymore. <laughs> well, no, you, you still are. You are very wise. Well, here's what we're going to do. Andy and I are going to go through the races. Uh, collectively, we came up with eight races of the 14 that we wanted to opine on. Some of them are going to be strong opinions about horses we like. In a couple cases, it's horses that we think are going to be short prices that are maybe worth playing against. So we'll highlight all that. We'll go through those eight races. And then when we're done, we'll have a question and answer session at the very end. Uh, so Andy, let's start off with, uh, we'll go in chronological order of the races that you and I uh, looked at and decided that we wanted to opine on. Friday, as everybody knows, is the Future Stars Friday program. So it's the five races for, for two-year-olds. And Neither of us had uh, an opinion in the turf sprint that we felt strong about, uh, nor the juvenile Phillies race, which only has six runners. Uh, but the first one in which uh, we had an opinion, and this is one of mine, is in the juvenile Phillies turf. And this is an, always an interesting race because it brings together horses who are those that come over from Europe, you've got some horses that are from Southern California, from Kentucky, and from New York. And the horse that I like in here is Cairo Memories, who I think uh, is going to, I just like her races visually, both at Del Mar when she won first time out, and when she won her most recent race at Santa Anita and the Surfer Girl. And by using DRF formulator, as you can see, what we've, we're showing you on the screen here, you can look at the past performances of the races. And one of the great things about formulator is that you can call up replays of the races. So we're going to take a look at Cairo Memories race here. Andy, I liked her first start at Del Mar. The, the, what I liked about it was that she started out, obviously, in the grass races. Uh, you can... Andy, just what are your thoughts on and uh, two-year-olds and well, past we, performances. That, that, or rather, that uh, replay uh, seemed to take a long time. Maybe it was because they were running so slow. Uh, I mean, Cairo Memories uh, <laughs> got a higher speed figure of 52 in her debut and a, and a 70 in, in, uh, in the next start that you liked so much. I just, I think this, uh, that's a little bit of a stretch, uh, particularly when you're uh, in a, Breeders' Cup race where you're going against Europeans that, you know, who just might be innately better. I, I, I have one thing to say about the Euros in here. Um, I mean, if you take a, well, if you take a look at uh, Piazza Bianca, the one horse, uh, got a figure of 85 at Woodbine. That was clearly a pretty good race finishing second. Uh, but she, uh, uh, she finished uh, second to a, to a European invader named Wild Beauty. And Wild Beauty, in her previous start, um, finished fifth uh, in the Phillies mile at Newmarket behind both Cachet uh, 
and Mizan Cien, uh, who were third and fourth and are in this field. So that's my uh, that's my clue that the uh, that the Euros you know have a little edge. If if they could beat Wild Beauty and Wild Beauty could beat the pretty good Piazza Bianca. Um, uh, you know, I don't, uh, I know you love your California horses, but uh, I, I, I think uh, uh, Cairo Memories is a little overmatched here. Not really, just in a specific spot, Andy, but nice, yeah. nice pejorative there. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dome Driver says hi, by the way. Um, let's move on to the juvenile. That's an inside joke for those of you who uh, used Danny and I on ESPN back in the day when he told me I was nuts for picking Dome Driver against Rock of Gibraltar, and I called him the chalk-eating weasel. <laughs> and the juvenile... Well, when, when Jack Christopher won the champagne, and it was obviously a very good effort, we, we gave the race a figure of 93, which stamped him as one of the best you know, two-year-olds of the season. Uh, as people who are following Belmont this fall may know, uh, or, or probably know, there the Belmont has had a lot of issues with its timer. If you look at the charts, there are a lot of races where there's just no time listed, or the footnote says, you know, we're reviewing the. Uh, uh, we're reviewing the time because of an operator error. Uh, we, um, you know, we, the, the, the time of the Jack Christopher race looked plausible, uh, you know, so, so we accepted it. But then um, uh, Craig Milkowski of Timeform US, you know, raised some questions about its accuracy. And so our our colleague Randy Moss, uh, who is a kind of a, sof a sophisticated method of using a, a, a you know, video editing software to you know to time races pretty precisely, uh, he he clocked the Jack Christopher race, and it was a good uh, eight tenths of a second faster than the than the time that had appeared in the Equibase charts. And we so we 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 went back to the drawing boards, uh, you know, recalculated the day's figures, gave Jack Christopher a 102, and I wrote a short article for the Racing Forum about what we did. I mean, we hate to change a high-profile uh, figure like this, but we, you know, we uh, uh, when when we think the the original one was wrong, and we now have the the, the right information. We've we've got to do it, and the 102 makes Jack Christopher not just uh, the you know uh, a a good two year old for 2021, but I mean this was the 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 best two year old speed figure in the last four years, and that's uh, I think good enough credential for him to crush this field, or let's say to beat this field. Uh, uh, decisively. Jay, you're, uh, you were frozen on the screen there. So I will, uh, uh, I will keep talking till you're unfrozen. I mean, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the figure of the race was strong enough that command performance, uh, the Todd Pletcher horse who ran second, you know, got a figure of 97, which, uh, which gives him a significant advantage over the rest of these horses. So if Jack Christopher is not a, a, an inviting uh, win price, uh, I, I would just go with a cold 110 exact and play the, uh, play the, the top two figures in order. The question is Latruska va uh, vulnerable. I think Jay and I uh, uh, kind of agree on this point. I mean, she's oddly, she's obviously, you know, a, you know, a, a very talented runner, and uh, you know, when when she beat Monomoy's girl uh, early in the year, uh, she, the that that was a 
extremely impressive performance against a, a, a filly who had finished first, I think, 12 times in a row. But her, her subsequent races have not been, uh, have, you know, she, she is, uh, they've, you know, they've all been good. She's, I mean, she's won them, but uh, she, she hasn't, she, she hasn't improved running speed figures uh, that are um, uh, pretty steady and they're not superstar material by any means. Uh, I mean, she's the, she, she, she's the best older filly of the year, but I wouldn't put her on the basis of these performances in the, you know, in the category of, you know, some of the, you know, the real great champion fillies and mares we've seen in recent years. So uh, on the figures, she's got uh, only a narrow edge in this field and there's plenty of speed to run with her. So definitely I would say she's vulnerable. Well, I will say that, uh, 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 whereas I wasn't uh, knocked over by McKinnon, uh, uh, Jay m made a really strong case for him when we were talking before the show, uh, or, uh, and uh, uh, he had seen the uh, McKinnon's last workout and was very impressed by it. I mean, even though uh, McKinnon. Uh, you know, is a turf horse and was working on the dirt. So I mean, out of, you know, out, out of out of respect for uh, for uh, for Jay's opinion, I will say I'll I'll give this horse a good look. Uh, uh, Loves only you is just another of the many euros on this card uh, that I just don't really have a, a, a good handle on. I think I will. Uh, uh, I, I will back off a judgment on, on making a judgment on, on that one. So this question is, uh, can Medina Spirit keep Nick's go honest on the front end on Saturday night? It's a good, I, he, I think he's going to try just because, you know, it is not in Bob Baffert's nature, you know, to back off from a, a confrontation with the speed horse. He he loves to let his horses run, but Nick's go uh, has really been a phenomenal performer this year. I mean, he he uh, you know he un, uh, unleashes like just tremendous speed. You know, runs runs dazzling fractions and even when he's when he's under pressure he just keeps on going i just don't think that medina spirit uh is is that good and if though and if uh and and if these two hook up uh medina spirit is going to be the one who cracks now there are questions about nick's go uh as well, uh, but mostly the the main question is that he's never been a mile and a quarter, and all of us who have spent many a year or many a decade watching the Kentucky Derby uh, unfold uh, know that the 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 transition from a mile and an eighth to a mile and a quarter can can really be. A, uh, a daunting one, you know, for even very good horses. So that that that's the question about Nick's go. But I I just don't see uh, uh, you know any way that Medina Spirit was going to beat him. All right, um, Andy. I think you wanted to talk a little bit about Aloha West. Was that you who wanted to talk? Well, about him? <clears throat> well uh, I, we wanted to talk about that race. Uh, and uh, let me uh, find out where I am. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, that is the sprint. I know we're going a little bit out of order now. Things are a little bit confused. Well, the the sprint to me is is kind of an open and shut case. I I think Jack, Jackie's Warrior is uh, probably as big a standout as there is on the card. I uh, you know I. Uh, you know, I think that if 
for, for anybody who's like looking to, you know, to play a, a pick five or some sequential bet in the latter part of the, the Breeders Cup, uh, that, I mean, Jackie's Warriors is the, uh, uh, the horse uh, that uh, that I would I would be prepared to stand alone with. I mean he uh, he's this has been an outstanding year for sprinters uh, in, in the U.S. I mean the last few years we you know America that is noted noted for its speed horses you know hasn't been producing many many good ones this year. Uh, there have been several horses who have run, uh, you know, you know, just Im- impressive speed figures of like of more than 110. And, uh, you know, Jackie's Warrior uh, uh, in those last two races, you know, real off figures of 107 and 110. And he did it on, you know, under pressure, setting fast fraction. Uh, I mean, he, he's, he's the goods and, you know, Steve Aspius, and I'm sure we'll have him ready for a big, a big effort. Now, looking at this field from the standpoint of, of betting the, the, this race unto itself, because I think Jackie's Warriors got to be odds on in here. Um, I think Jack, the speed of Jackie's Warrior is really going to take a, a toll on on the other front running types in here like special reserve and dr shevel uh and uh uh you know i looking at this race for um for an exact possibility i uh i settle on a a loa west i mean this is this is one of the few horses in the race i think is a you know, is a really solid closer, uh, and he's he's got an, an I think a better kick than uh, even just a, a, a cursory glance as his past performances would suggest, because he he's been in fields where there uh, in the last couple starts where there hasn't been. You know that much of a pace. I mean, they, you know, they, the, the the races were respectable from the pace standpoint. But like in uh, two back, two races back at Saratoga, uh, where the final time was one twenty one and change. Uh, you know, his the half mile was was forty five seconds, and. Uh, uh, you know that that's dawdling for uh, a final time like that. So I, the he, he he has finished strong in relatively slow pace races. There were no setups for him, and uh, um, I think he'll be he'll be a square price, and uh, will you know have the makings of a uh, uh, you know a, a, you know a legitimate exact to play. Now, Emily, where do we go from here? Well, what, is there something you'd like to talk about? We have the turf. We've got the filling mare sprint distaff. And, of course, obviously, you have a strong opinion in the classic, which um, I think well, is we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll, we'll finish off with that. Uh, um, the um, uh, let, let, let's let's talk about the the last three races on the card. The the, the distaff, the turf and, and, and the classic. Uh, we had a. Uh, we had a question earlier about Latruska, and um, you know the, the, she is obviously the, the legitimate favorite. Uh, uh, but you know, I, I am as as a figure guy, I'm not overwhelmed by uh, uh, you know by her, her form. I mean, this is uh, her. her all of her recent wins, all of her wins, you know, have been below the, you know, the average winning f- figure for, you know, the, the Breeders' Cup distaff historically. So, uh, she, she, you know, a lot of people have touted her as a superstar. I think, she, I mean, she's just a, a good filly 
who is vulnerable here, and you've got a, 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 a race with uh, with uh, a, enough enough speed to uh, uh, you know to put pressure on her. I mean, horologist, and she dares the devil. There are an awful lot of ones in their past performances. Um, so, you know, I I I I'd, I'd look for a way to to beat her. I mean, I, my, my notion in here, and this is not a real strong conviction, but I think that Royal flag looks like a, uh, looks like a, a mayor who has just gotten good at, at the, the right time. I mean, she, uh, um, uh, she, she ran very well to, uh, in the personal incident at Saratoga, uh, and, and lost by less than a length to Latresca on on a on a racing surface that I sort of noted as being strongly speed favoring, and then she came back again in the in the Bell Damon, uh, you know, and, and in a slow pace race where they went six furlongs in one thirteen, and she you know, nevertheless you know closed and, and blew away the field at the end. I mean, it's Chad Brown, uh, uh, you know, of, uh, with, with a, a filly who's got, you know, who's got figures that put her right there with, with a standout favorite. Uh, so, uh, I, you know, if, if one is inclined to take a, a little bit of a stand against Latruska, uh, I mean, royal flag would, would would be the one that I would use. Now, it's, Jay is still not in the uh, in the uh, uh, in, in, on the scene, so uh, um, let, let's let's talk a, a, a bit about the turf. Um, the uh, you know the the most important thing to know, I think, in handicapping this race over the years is that is that a mile and a half on the grass is the Europeans game. I mean, even, you know, not many of our, uh, of our best turf horses are, are great mile and a halfers. There's an occasionally one will come along, but, um, uh, you know, the, the, I mean, turf and long distance, is uh uh you know is what european racing is so often about and you know when when the, when the euros uh, uh send their good horses over here they usually win i mean they've uh you know the europeans have won 10 of the last 13 runnings of this race and uh, uh you know i uh I, I'm not sure that this is like the, the uh, not the mightiest European contingent we've seen, but we do have the defending champion in the turf, uh, Tarnawa, who who won this race last year, beating a a really outstanding European horse, Magical, and she has. Uh, uh, she she has come back and you know just run you know she's showing no fear runs against uh, males all the time, and she got beat less than a length in you know in the major European race the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe, uh, which she also you uh, uh, I mean she she had also come from a, uh, a a real good prep race at Longchamp last year so. Uh, uh, so the uh, trainer is you, Dermot Well is is using kind of the same pattern to to get here. Uh, the um, the best of the Europe of the Americans uh, is uh, is number three domestic spending, and uh, this first ran uh, one of the one of the best uh, speed figures. Uh, by any U.S. turf horse uh, when he won the Manhattan Stakes at Belmont uh, in the summer, a uh, figure of 106, which uh, a little bit below par for the for the uh, 
for, for the Breeders' Cup turf, but nevertheless an outstanding effort. Don't be thrown off by domestic spending's uh, loss at, at Arlington last time. If, if ever a, a horse was compromised by a slow pace on the turf, uh, domestic spending was. I mean, he is a horse with, with, with no early speed. He's a late running horse. Uh, and in the, in this race, uh, the, the horses were crawled the first half mile in like 52.6 seconds. I mean, and no, nobody was gonna, uh, was gonna make a, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a mighty finish, uh, in, in here. I mean, if you, uh, uh, you know, if you will look at the, uh, uh, number three on the outside, charging hard and that horse in front just had too much left after after those slow fractions, but that that was a winning effort. So I, you know, I think the, if you, if you want to be a, uh, an American chauvinist, you can you can definitely take a uh, a, a shot with domestic spending uh, against Tarnawa, but the, you know, but the history of the uh, 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 you know of, of the Breeders' Cup turf. Uh, Makes me makes me still lean toward the euros. So Emily, should we now turn toward the classic? Yeah, um, we definitely have lost Jay, unfortunately. But I did before we talk about the classic. Want to mention a couple of the things that Jay wanted to mention because I know that you guys came here to hear about Jay's picks and Andy's picks. Um, Jay was very interested in McKinnon in the juvenile turf. If you have a chance to go back and watch his workout on the dirt here at Del Mar two days ago, um, he just looked phenomenal. And given that he is a turf horse, the fact that he did so well on the dirt was very impressive. Jay was also leaning a little bit towards not playing Gamine. He didn't love Gamine's ballerina at Saratoga. And um, I'm hearing that a lot from people around here. They're all trying to find that one favorite to bet against, whether that's Latruska or Gamine or um, Life is Good or Jackie's Warrior. So it'll be interesting to see if they all get beat or if none of them get beat, you know. Um, so a lot of talk about Nick's go in the classic and whether he can go that 10 furlongs, but Andy, what do you got for us in the classic? Well, I love this race. Uh, I mean, not, I'm not going to say that from the gambling standpoint, but just from the fan standpoint, this, this is a, a true championship race. Well, you know what the readers cut, classic was supposed to be we've got the three big names from the triple crown series um particularly with uh uh with hot rod charlie and uh essential quality matching up again i mean the uh i mean this race uh uh you know certainly is definitely going to determine the three-year-old champion and then the we have the other factor you love to see in the year-end finale: the, the 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 good three-year-olds challenging, you know, the top older horse or horses in the country. And uh, no doubt that Nick's Nick's go uh, is is that horse. So the the the, the winner of this race um, is is probably going to be horse of the year. I I think. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, if Nick's go does it, he was, he'll be a, you know, an, you know, emphatically a, uh, 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 you know, uh, you know, uh, an, uh, an outstanding champion of 2021. But I, I, you know, I think with the, uh, with the, with the other speed in this race and the, the questions about his distance, uh, I mean, this, this could come down to a, uh, you know, a, uh, a, a, a Belmont Stakes rematch of, uh, 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 you know, of uh, essential quality and hot rod Charlie. And the, although essential quality won uh, 
won the Belmont and, you know, real ran a, you know, a solid speed figure, uh, uh, you know, of, of 109, uh, you know, uh, I I thought that uh, Hot Rod Charlie, uh, you know, ran at least as well as the winner. I mean, he Hot Rod Charlie, you know, coped with a really sizzling pace for a mile and a half. I mean, going forty six uh, seconds and change, and and when uh, I mean, most horses would have cracked under that pressure. Um, but he didn't, and when uh, when essential quality came to him and they drew a breast, I mean, Hot Rod Charlie, you know, just dug in and you know fought back. He wound up losing by a length, but I, it was a uh, I, I think a, a, a terrific effort, and I, on the on the basis of uh, uh, of that performance, I'm a. You know, I'm kind of a hot rod Charlie fan, and uh, I lean I lean toward him in, in this race. Now I see Jay nodding. Does this mean you're you're back in the conversation? Joe Hirsch would say that I'm nodding in approval. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, did you miss me? We we did, and uh, uh, you know I. Uh, uh, I, I edited a few of your selections. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, uh, we, uh, but I, uh, uh, I mean, so, so, so now that you're back with us, what, 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 how did, how did you view the classic? I don't know what all you've covered in my uh, absence. You've covered everything. I went out. I went. You know, I'm training for the marathon. I went out for a run, uh, stopped and <laughs> had lunch, put some gas in the car. It was it was a worthwhile, you know, time uh, <laughs> being gone. My thought on the classic, Andy, is that I think the three year olds are better than the older horses, with the exception of Nick's Go. Yeah. And you know, my big question with Nick's Go is whether he can get the mile and a quarter in a race where I think there will be some pressured pace. I, I don't think Medina spirit is going to let him get away. And yeah. to me, the race comes down to, as you were, I know, just highlighting the the merits of, of how hot rod, how well hot rod Charlie ran in the Belmont stakes. And it was a sensational performance, but I, I think both he and essential quality of both continued to come forward since that race. And to me, they're the best two horses in the race going in. Yeah. And, you know, no doubt that they can, both go a mile and a quarter. Uh, it's just that you know, it, it, you know, I, 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 you know, I don't dismiss Nick's go, you know, on on those grounds because he had he has really run some some fabulous uh, uh, races this year, and uh, um, uh, we will. Uh, I, 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 you know, I'm excited about this race. I, uh, uh, you know, my. Uh, my financial uh, interest will revolve around uh, Hot Rod Charlie. Uh, there will be no Medina spirits on any of my tickets. Uh, um, uh, but uh, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna have us uh, at least uh, from, from the fan standpoint a, sat, a really satisfying, dramatic race. So Andy, when I uh, dur during while we were trying to iron out my technical problems, I apologize to to those of you who've uh, <laughs> uh, stayed through this, but I'm extremely appreciative of Andy for carrying uh, the ball all the way through, <laughs> and for our uh, backstage producer Emily Shields for trying to troubleshoot everything here and and get us back up to speed. Um, I'm not sure what all you covered because when when I dropped out, it was around the time we were we were only on the juvenile at the time. And you were talking about the fig of uh, Jack Christopher. Did, right. did you? Well, we, uh, we, you know, we, uh, uh, we gave right. a, we gave a mention to your McKinnon. Uh, well, that, that's in the juvenile turf. Let me finish what I was asking before. You, did, did we talk about Oviatt class and why I like him in the juvenile? And if not, uh, if Emily, if you're okay. No, I was, you know, I was, I was glad you cut out there because I were, we were trying to spare you that embarrassment. Yeah, you know, Andy, you keep saying stuff like that, and yet, you know, I, I, I hope you've got extra napkins next to you there to wipe all the chalk off your face. This is very reminiscent of how you dogged me for 
picking Dome Driver when we were on ESPN because <laughs> you, you said Rock of Gibraltar couldn't lose, and you said you'd bow down uh, if 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 Dome Driver won in the press box. And I will say this: you were good to your word. You you, you did so after after you won. All right, well, all right. Tell but, us, so tell let us me, why you like. Ovi. Let me give you my case for a horse who's twenty to one and not six to five. You know, for those of you who don't necessarily want to okay. play six to five shots. Um, my obviously Jack Christopher and Corniche are faster on figs. My theory in this race is that Corniche having to go from post 12 and Jack Christopher having to go from the rail are both going to have to be sent early. I'm, I think Jack Christopher, even with that big fig is still questionable going two turns. Um, in the race here where Corniche beats Ovi at class, this was a very speed favoring track at Santa Anita that day. And Corniche certainly ran well, but he rode the crest of what I thought was a, a track that was in his favor, whereas Oviat Class did not have a track in his favor that day. And to me, Oviat Class, even though he's light on figs, has a chance to outrun his odds over hopefully a surface that's more fair than the one he ran on last time. And also in a race where I'm anticipating a hot pace that's going to help his late run. And if he's not good enough, I'll tear up my tickets at 15 or 20 to one. And I'll bow down to you, Andy, for having that six to five shot. I, I, well, I question your premise though, babe, because after when, when you had talked, you know, suggested that there was this uh, bias uh, this day, uh, I, you know, went up, I went back and looked at, at the charts. I didn't see a bias. Uh, uh, you, you must have looked at the, the wrong day. Wired the field, uh, um, but uh, uh, I, I think it, uh, you know, the you know the strength of um, the one horses, uh, uh, you know, figures, connections, everything else. I I just think he's 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 too he's too good. Uh, uh, you know, if he can't overcome post position one, then uh, I'm, I'm tearing up the figures. I yeah, mean, it's not post position one; it's the two turns. That's my that and and in a race where he's going to get he the outside horse is going to have to go as well. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All I know is I'm going to get 15 times the price your horse is, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay. <laughs> um, I know uh, Emily uh, uh, was able to briefly mentioned that I thought Gamine was a, a horse that I was, uh, I thought was vulnerable. And I know Andy, you addressed earlier, I saw someone had asked about Latruska. I was able to at least see that that was going on. Yeah, we talked those about are, that a fair yeah, amount. Yeah, those are two horses you and I think might yeah. uh, be vulnerable. My, here's yeah. my thing on Gamine. You know, she's obviously on her best day, far and away the best horse in that race. I just don't know if she's as good this year as last year. And I think people might be handicapping her based on her 2020 form as opposed to 2021. And Andy, we're taking a look at her ballerina here. And, and what concerns me here is that she really showed a propensity to want to lug out in a race where there wasn't, you know, a whole lot of pace. And I think she's going to have pace pressure from Bella Sophia in this abbreviated five horse field on Saturday. And I don't know that she's as good as she was a year ago. Certainly, She's the horse to beat, but I don't know that she's a layup. What do you think? I don't, you know, Bella Sophia, the more I looked, the, the less I liked her. I mean, she, you know, she had, uh, she had fairly soft, pace, you know, has had some very soft pace situations. And yeah, Gamine, uh, who was so great last year, I mean, had, has not run up to that level, but she still has just ran a figure of 104, which is, uh, which is probably going to be good enough to, to, you know, to win the race on Saturday. So, uh, I, I, I share your, uh, my, uh, your skepticism on a mild level, but I really don't uh, feel like making a, a case for. For for either of her main rivals, and those would be Bella Sophia uh, and Cece. Uh, yeah. Lastly, before we move on uh, to some more Q and A, 
Uh, Andy, did you get a chance to cover the turf while I was uh, out running all my errands? I I did, and and just talked about the uh, the the Europeans' uh, historic edge in this race, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, but the. The, the, I mean, domestic spending uh, uh, did, did, you know, did merit, you know, a, a, a lot of respect that, that, that it, I mean, thought in defeat at Arlington. I mean, he, 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 he really distinguished himself, but it's, uh, this is uh, nevertheless a mile and a half on the turf is the Euros game. Right. And uh, Tarnawa being the, defending race winner in there. Uh, we'll take some Q&A now. Uh, and again, uh, thanks uh, to all of you for hanging in there as we ironed all this out, but it looks like we're moving along swimmingly now. I hope I just didn't mush us. Uh, don't forget, get easy access to buyer speed figures and DRF pass performances for free when you play the races at DRF Bets. Sign up at drf.com backslash bets with promo code double and get a $250 bonus to bet the Breeders' Cup this Friday and Saturday at Del Mar. You can do that through DRF Bets. All right, let's go to the question bag. Andy, this is for you. Uh, this is obviously a longtime fan of yours because they want to know who your <laughs> mortal lock is. I, I love it. No, I... Um, uh, uh, no, nothing nothing in, in, that I would <laughs> that I would put that uh, that that label on not even the great it, Jack Christopher at six to five uh, well uh, the t, t, you know too many of these too many of these races are are frankly too tough for me I mean the uh, you know the, the the you know the explosion of turf racing, uh, in you know in 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 America is not something that I necessarily uh, have welcomed, and to, uh, especially two year old turf racing, where uh, where you you know where where you're doing a lot of guessing as to who who's going to like the grass and who's not. Uh, I mean, is you know, often inscrutable, and then when you've got you know like you know, a, a batch of Europeans that you don't know anything about uh, <laughs> makes it even tougher. So no mortal locks on the, <laughs> certainly on the grass for me. All right. Uh, I think we've got time for a couple more questions. So uh, let's see what else we have in the queue. John Morton says, John Morton says, says Corniche had a 98, Andy. Uh, it says, why are you discounting him? Are, are you in fact discounting him? Well, he, he he got a 98 sprinting and then he uh you know he he got loose on the lead going two turns and uh uh on that big Santa Anita bias day that uh, Jay claims existed I'm glad and, you come to uh, you know that, and, yeah. and he he ran a uh uh you know an undistinguished figure uh, so uh uh you know i mean <clears throat> uh you know you you in a situation like this, you've got to put put a lot more emphasis on the uh, on the horse's performance going, you know, at or near today's distance, and uh, so just be, just looking at at those two races, you I think you would say that maybe you know Corniche's distance running ability uh, has yet you know has yet to be validated. Uh, let's uh, see what else we have in the queue here. Gary Lockwood wants to know, what's your thoughts on Art Collector for Saturday? I'll, I'll take that one first, Andy, okay. and then you can weigh in. I think Art Collector is a, obviously a, a talented horse who's in terrific form right now, three straight wins since Bill Mott took over as his trainer. And I thought Tom Drury did a, a, a very good job with him last year as well. And I just think this is a matter of a horse getting older and getting faster. And, and Bill Mott's a Hall of Fame trainer. That said... Uh, I, this horse is unproven at a mile and a quarter. And I don't know that the race comes up well for him. There, there's faster horses early than him in the race. And so for him to win, he's going to have to track Nick's go and or 
uh, Medina Spirit, overhaul those horses and then hold off the late runners. To me, it's a tall order for him. What do you think, Andy? Yeah, he's just, uh, I mean, and I, I don't say this you know, derogatorily, he's not good enough. I mean, he's not. I mean, he, he's a horse we'd all love to own, <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, but he is not an upper echelon grade one type, in, in, in my opinion. I, I don't think he is, he has, he's ever you know, given a performance that I would say could, you know, could beat, uh, you know, the, the favorites in this race on their best day. All right. Uh, let's see if we've got, uh, a couple others in here. Uh, Jay Beckenstein wants to know, Andy, if we think that Medina Spirit drawing outside of Nick's Go helps Nick's Go's chances. You know, I don't know, because I think Medina Spirit has to potentially press him. Um, it's a good question, because obviously if Medina Spirit was inside of him, maybe they could go you know, faster earlier and then force Nick's Go to to have to clear off, uh, but I don't know that it's going to matter. What do you think, Andy? I mean, I mean, I, Nick's go, I think, is just is is faster. I mean, I don't think that the uh, um, uh, uh, you know I, I you know I I think he's going to ultimately you know outrun anybody who who presses him, uh, but. Uh, you know, again, as we've been saying throughout the broadcast, uh, uh, you know, the distance really is a question. And he's, you know, he, he's, um, you know, he, he's certainly not going to have a soft trip. All right, let's move on. We've got uh, a number of questions. And Andy, I mean, you can hang in here as long as you want. You already That's carried right. uh, a, a, a more weight than Forgo uh, while I was out uh, sunning myself in the backyard. So if, if you get to a point where you need to go, I'll be happy to, <laughs> we can both keep, keep going here. Um, Jack Vaughn wants to know, can you comment on either of the mile races in terms of pace? I'm not sure. I want to move on from this because I'm not sure what this question is in regards to if it's, there's two mile grass races for two-year-olds and there's one mile race uh, on the dirt for older horses. So Let's see if maybe we can get Jack to resubmit that and we'll understand uh, uh, exactly what he was asking so we can answer his question properly. Uh, the next question is from Brian Yano, who says, uh, does life is good win? Andy, this to me would be if somebody said, what's your most likely winner? Not, you know, price doesn't matter. I think he's the most likely winner of the of the two days. Um, uh, well, I, I would maybe lean toward the sprinter you know i'm just wondering about the the presence of eight rings uh in here i mean uh <clears throat> maybe this is a little too conspiratorial but wouldn't wouldn't bob baffert uh, be happy to uh uh bring about the defeat of life is good uh i, I don't know uh, I, I think he would like to beat him because he has a better horse. I don't know that he'd like to beat him in case he still wants to, you know, out of spite and if in case he ever wanted horses again from the connections of, of life is good. So I think that, you know, would weigh into it. I think he thinks this is the best spot for eight rings. Uh, I do think he'll be prominent early, though. Well, I know you're a man who always looks for the best in human nature and people. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, um, I suppose life is good as the, you know, as, as you know, as ascension here, and uh, um, I, I, I'm still, uh, you know, my my signal for the day is still uh, Jackie. Jackie's warrior. You know, I want to follow up on Jackie's warrior. Did you think he was a, a, a cinch last year in the juvenile? No. No? No. Okay. I don't, th I don't think so. It's too long ago. To <laughs> <laughs> why, why did I have a bad opinion on that? No, I don't remember. I, 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 to me, he, it's, it's, it's kind of a similar situation to Jack Christopher. That's why I was curious what, yeah, uh, no. <laughs> if, you had a, if you were all in last year on Jackie's Warrior. No, no, he's just got, you know, uh, I mean, he, he's, uh, uh, I mean, he's proved that he's not a, a two-turn horse. Uh, and and we, we really didn't know that until, you know, uh, your, you know this season had, uh, you know, 
know, gone on a ways, but he's, he's, you know, he's clearly found his niche as a sprinter. And I think he's a, a real good one. Yeah, no, I'm not questioning that. I'm just saying last year he came into the Breeders' Cup Juvenile off a big race in the Champagne uh, and couldn't quite handle the two turns in a fast-paced race. And to me, that is potentially what could happen here with Jack Christopher. That was the analogy. I was no, I would say that it was not potentially what will happen. With, 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 well, <laughs> I, I hope you enjoyed uh, the Andy Byer show and my <laughs> limited participation uh, in the <laughs> seminar. Apologies for the technical difficulties we had. Uh, thank you for sticking with us throughout this. Andy, thank you uh, for like you know, Forgo uh, carrying 137 pounds or more uh, <laughs> during this afternoon. Uh, for Andy Byer, I'm Jay Privman. Thanks to Emily Shields, our producer behind the scenes. Thanks to all of you for watching and good luck at the Breeders' Cup this week. And don't forget, fund yourself with those great promotions we've got through DRF Bets. Okay. Good night, all. <laughs>